From Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world, I'm David Gabbard, and this is the Vegas Faces Podcast, where we talk with Las Vegas locals about what it's really like to live in the city of lights. Whether you're living in Vegas, moving to Vegas, or just visiting Vegas and looking for new adventures, together let's discover the hidden gems that make Sin City the most visited place on earth. Hey everybody, welcome to the Vegas Faces Podcast, where we talk everything Vegas and what it's like to live in the entertainment capital of the world. I'm David Gavry, I'm a Las Vegas realtor with Realty One Group Summerlin. Shout out to producer Paul behind the scenes, making us all look good. This week's topic is family-friendly Vegas attractions. With us today is the lovely Claire Gentile, a real-life mermaid. We met Claire when we took our kids to the Mermaid Show at the Silverton Hotel Aquarium, which is voted best free attraction in all of Las Vegas. We're happy to have Claire here today to talk about what it's literally like to be a mermaid. So let's get right into it. Claire, welcome to Vegas Faces. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. I'm so happy that we get to actually talk to the person behind the glass. And when we first met you, my daughter was going nuts about the mermaid. You were blowing bubbles and blowing kisses and waving. Like it was like for her, for a three-year-old, four-year-old, like it was out of this world. And so um, I have to first thank you for being so amazing to my kiddos who love your show. And it's an honor to, to finally meet you and talk about what it's like to be in that show. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually remember that day. And it was sometime after that, that somebody sent me your post that you and your wife had made about the Silverton and the mermaids being a really good family friendly attraction and a free kind of like a free show somebody sent me over the post that you guys did and i immediately was like thank you guys so much for the shout out and the love and but yeah um that i was fairly new when you guys uh were there that day too and i was still kind of in the mode of like trying not to die like just like <laughs> having the face on that like everything's fine i'm totally comfortable in the water <laughs> But um, I was still fairly new and I was like really just um, like in between breaths, just trying not to drown basically. But the the kids are so fun. They make, they're the, the funnest part about the job. And when I see really, really young kids, um, children like your children around that age, I can literally see like the mermaids being these memories like cemented into their little minds forever and it's like it's the best thing ever because i have these like core memories of when i was really really little two really special things and i feel like i i am i get to be that for lots of kids and i just think it's like the coolest funnest thing ever yeah a hundred percent i mean my daughter still loves little mermaid and like the fact that we were like aya do you want to go see the mermaid she's like oh yeah, like we like to just take her to a place where she's like, these are real mermaids. They're doing flips and and they're waving at me. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> but I I'm always interested in like the behind the scenes. Like when you talked about holding your breath, and I you know in my mind I immediately go like, oh man, she has to swim with all those fish. Like there's a stingray in there. Like uh oh, is that okay? Like like th does any of that scare you at any point? Have you always been like the, an ocean swimmer that just you know freely? Because for me like. If you if you give me a snorkel and I start to see what's in there, I'm jumping out like I'm out of there. Like I'll dip my feet in and that's about as far as I go. So I'd like to know about your I guess your swimming background, how you get into such a such a gig like this. My swimming background is I am Italian. My my father, my brothers, most of my family is currently in Italy, and so I came here at a very very young age. But I have spent a great majority of my summers in Italy, stay, you know, visiting dad and, and hanging out with family. And we are ocean people, like majorly ocean people. So I grew up in the water and it's always been fins in a mask. Uh, my father is a professional scuba diver. I, I don't scuba, um, but I, but I've just, I'm a strong swimmer. I've always been comfortable in the water and I love snorkeling around and seeing fish and, and squid and octopus and, and all the things. Um, so there's that. I, I love the water. I'm comfortable in it. And I and I like seeing um, sea creatures. My performance background is in dance. Um, 
but I had been doing a lot of gigging and, and things like that for um, personal gigs or uh, entertainment groups that I work with that kind of have me go out to do some really, really fun stuff. And I have two other friends of mine, two girlfriends from dance, and they had been doing some mermaid stuff. And I was like, that is dream job. So I kind of reached out to them. And I was like, I, I think I would really love to try to try my hand at this. So they kind of helped me out here and there and kind of slowly brought me in. And I realized quickly, like, this is super fun. Um, did some gigs. And then I realized very quickly, I, I like mermaiding in water. And so I had done some stuff at Resorts World and some really fun, cool stuff, but it was more just kind of sitting and posing and hanging out. And uh, I really wanted to be in water. So I, I knew about the Silverton and um, I reached out to them and applied when they had an opening and they immediately emailed me back and they were like, no, thank you. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> so like, but they, but it wasn't that they were just like, uh, no. They, they emailed me back and basically were like, you know, we'd love to talk to you, but you don't have any certifications. You need at bare minimum a, a open water scuba cert to do this. So I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. I can do that. So I never scuba in my life. And um, I was able to reach out and get in touch with Kristen Janice. She runs the show there at the Silverton. And... Um, she is a patty diver and mermaid so she was able to certify me herself and in doing that i was able to build a pretty good relationship with her so when there was an opening for another mermaid or they call them free swimmers um she let me know to apply right away and and then it was audition time wow yeah what is and the that, audition just can yeah. you swim and wave and blow bubbles and hold your breath like that is yeah, an audition for a mermaid show <laughs> I considered myself a pretty strong swimmer. I was like, oh, I am good. Like, I've done yeah. some mermaid gigs. I love the water. I'm fine. Like, and then it came time for audition. And the audition is basically you show up, you do some talking to, you go over your certifications and, and the important stuff. And then you, in your swimsuit, need to go down for five minutes and basically get down by yourself. Uh, usually we recommend people wear weights and this is just in swimsuit. So put, put some weight on, get down to the bottom and move between, we have regulators at the bottom that we use when we're down there to breathe, wow. right? We, we hold our breath in between uh, these regulators wow. where we get our oxygen. So you have five minutes to get down there in your swimsuit, move between the regulators and demonstrate that you know how to use them. And then after five minutes of that, come back up, they put you in a tail and then you have to go down for 10 minutes and kind of wow. show them what you got. Wow. And so uh, after the first five minutes was daunting. And if you're not used to a big glass aquarium, I'm not used to that. I was like, I'm fine. That aquarium, it felt like it was just like caving in on me, like kind of um, tunnel vision. And there's... Oh you know, 2000 creatures in the tank and you don't realize how busy it is until you're in the tank. And um, so by the end of the, the audition, which took like, we ended up being there for, for several hours, almost four hours. By the end of the audition, we, we were, every, every girl that was there, I think there was five of us that day, we were destroyed. Like, <laughs> destroyed. And we're all like, good. One, one or two of the girls, they were pro swimmers, wow. utterly destroyed. So it, it was, quite a process to the point where I was like, that was really difficult. I don't even know that I like that. I didn't really like that. That was so hard. And I don't know that I actually want this job that was really, really, really uncomfortable and just so challenging. I was like, I don't know. So I got the call back um, for this job and I was like, oh man. So I spoke to Kristen and I said, look, that was really hard. I don't know if I actually like that. I don't think I did. And she said, everybody kind of starts like that. M most people, it's in it's so much harder than people think. And um, she goes, but if you just get comfortable being uncomfortable and you just stick with it, it's going to be one of the funnest things you've ever done in your life. And she was right. And I, I just stuck it out. And now I'm like, I couldn't imagine a, a funner gig than this. Like I, I, I have my real adult grown-up job. The mermaid is my fun job. So it's 
it's like my little dream gig that I get to go do. And I'm, I'm so grateful to be there. Wow. Wait, so Claire, are you telling us you're not actually a mermaid? You're actually a human? I'm actually, I'm actually human. Yeah, of legs most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really awesome. I think when people think Vegas, Vegas entertainment, they the go tos are the nightclubs, or obviously the gambling, or the the shows, the Cirque du Soleil shows, the concerts, uh, magicians, comedians. But like, I feel like people don't really know about all the other shows, such as the Mermaid Show at the Silverton. Yeah, the the best free entertainment, at least that's readily available, basically almost seven nights a week. I I'd say whether it's comedy um, at an open mic somewhere or um, lounge you know, musicians, bands playing every night in the casinos where you can just go enjoy incredible cover bands and you can dance or have fun or do whatever. I think that's definitely one of the most readily available things that's, that's free and, and awesome. Speaking of Cirque, um, we've had a couple sort of people um, in, the, in the tank uh, both as mermaids and as um, safety divers as well. So we actually have a girl currently working with us, Jill, um, who's wonderful, talented girl, and she also works at O oh, at the Bellagio as well. Wow. Yeah. Is, it, like her. is that like an easy transition, or is it still difficult the way you described for them to do to do the? Even though they're familiar with the water in their own way at the O show, how do they transition well? into the mermaid show? I think for Jill, I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to guess that even though she's in the water, the majority of the show, oh, um, and she's on the technical and scuba side of things. Um, but regardless of how long you're in the water, even a scuba, once you put on a tail and you have no, you don't have your own regulator or any of the things, right? You're weighted, you have a tail and you, you, you work in between breathing. Um, oh, I know that it was a huge challenge for her too. And it's it just takes time um, of doing what we do and getting comfortable in the water. Oh man. And is there an extra level of discomfort when the crowds start to appear around and start to wave at you? And you like, do you ever feel extra pressure? Like, oh no, don't mess this up in front of the kids or anything like that? Yeah, in the beginning, for sure, when I was new and I was still kind of getting comfortable with everything and I was working on certain tricks I wanted to do or working on my breath hold. Um, in, in the beginning, yes, for sure. I was like, oh, man, oh, man, should I even try this trick right now? All these people are watching and I'll probably look so silly. Um, <laughs> but I ended up realizing very quickly um, the first couple of times I was in the water, I was with another mermaid and the, and it was a more experienced mermaid who had been there a while. So when you're training, you're, you, you dive tandem. So, um, it was really cool because they kind of were like, Hey, do you want to do some tricks together? Like how, they kind of fill you out and want you to do what you're comfortable with. So I was like, yeah, let's do some tricks. And, um, and after a while I was like, I'm just going to try anything and everything. And I realized pretty fast like this is really fun for these for these people watching to see they enjoyed watching me like flop all these bubble rings and do all this silly stuff or you know what i mean they they realized too that i was learning and um and i think they actually really enjoyed watching part of the process of how we learn we don't get to go in there privately or have a private tank where we can train and perfect all the things that we do we learn in front of everyone <laughs> so, yeah, so, and then I, and, and so you, I think you just kind of have to get comfortable with like, it is what it is. And then you, you realize very fast, like they, they really love that. They enjoyed that. And it's rare that you see two mermaids in there together. We go solo. So it's, it was kind of a treat for them too, to watch us, to watch me learn and, and try things or practice with another mermaid. It was, it's kind of a really special thing when you get to see more than one mermaid at once. That's awesome. How long has this show been around at the Silverton? Almost 20 years. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, it started out, it was not a mermaid show originally. It started out as something kind of Cirque centered. Um, it, mm -hmm. it was very different. It was a, a man on a piano underwater, like the Barachi kind of style. At tons of props and costumes in the water and they even had this piping that goes around the tank and it makes like a bubble curtain it was super cool um oh. it was really neat and they had some underwater 
performers, like professional uh, uh, synchronized swimmers doing some really beautiful stuff in the water. And then eventually it turned into like incorporating like more mermaid stuff and then just mermaids. But um, in the back, we have, um, you know, the, the facility is huge and we have all kinds of cool things back there, including props and costumes from the original show that we still have in the back and uh, pay, pay homage to, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, it's evolved, but it's been basically mermaids, I, I think for around 17 or 18 years. Wow. I mean, yeah, it has its own like mermaid wing. You have the mermaid lounge right next door where you can uh, drink and get something to eat while watching the show. Then behind the tank, on the other side of the tank, there's that whole mermaid memorabilia section. Like it's it's kind of like its own little like mermaid wing of the of the hotel. It's really fun. The Mermaid Grotto, yeah, with all the art, it's really beautiful. It's part of the tour too. When people do mermaid school or they sign up, children and adults, it's it's part of like we do a tour before we do water, or vice versa, depending on the size of the group. But that art, the grotto full of art, is part of the tour, and we talk a lot about that. I think the mermaids, a, a big part of why the mermaids have been around. Uh, as long as they have and the aquarium is as beautiful as it is and such a big part of the Silverton as a whole from what's been explained to me that the owner really loves all things um, ocean um, and just ocean marine life and, and mermaid centered so it's just like um, part of a personal love of you know the owner that that's mm -hmm. a big reason why that's there and why it's why it's been there as long as it has. Yeah, I get it. We're in a desert. We want water. If we can get any kind of water and entertainment, Bellagio Fountains or the Waterfall at the Wynn, the show at the Silverton, just give us a water spectacle here in this dry desert. Yeah, for sure. Every It's so funny because every time I see like a new build or like something cool on the strip, it's new or it has like a body of water, really beautiful. And I'm uh -huh. always like, they should put mermaids in that. That should have I mermaids. Like <laughs> Disneyland, they should put mermaids in that in there, <laughs> like yeah. everywhere I right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, can if anyone wants to audition, like, as long as you have the certification, like, they're they're open to that. Like, is uh, like, do you then have to like train, like, like I guess I don't know a, a mermaid mentee program type of situation. Like, how does that kind of thing work? we don't really have a, a mentorship kind of thing like you get typically two days of training um and that's again your those two days are live in the tank with people watching you on the outside it's not a private thing it's it's just the way of things there so um if, when we're hiring we'll have open auditions you do have to have at minimum an open water scuba certification i think the more certifications you have the better um a lot, some of the girls there, I, they do come from professional swimming backgrounds, synchronized swimming uh, generally. And we have some really incredible, powerful swimmers there with really incredible breath holds that I just like strive to get to one day. But um, I'm one of the that I had no, no professional swimming background. I was a strong swimmer, but had no, no pro background. So I had to really prove myself and, and work really hard <laughs> and still Claire, working. Claire, what's the longest you can hold your breath? Um, I could probably go up to maybe a couple of minutes, but the issue is that's if you're stationary. So if I just went down there and I held on to a rock and didn't move, I could probably have a nice breath hold. But because we're moving so much and we're doing really big dynamic movement between rocks or flips or, and then also using our oxygen to do tricks and bubbles and all kinds of stuff. So we, we use up our oxygen pretty quick. I may, may be a minute for me cause I move, I'm, I'm moving a lot. Um, but we have a couple of girls there that have like, really really incredible breath holds and they've been doing it a while and also come from synchronized swimming so they they're really something to watch i know we have a girl um there named hannah who's really has like an incredible breath hold um one of the girls that was hired with me megan when we both first started you know we were we were pretty short and pretty rough in the tank and now i watch her and i'm just like in awe of her she's become such an incredible mover i mean just swimmer performer and her breath hold too is is really something 
like what's an incredible breath hold? Like five minutes? Like what's like a crazy amount of time to hold your not, breath while doing those tricks? Like <laughs> not five minutes. Um, <laughs> Hannah, I think, can go uh, maybe a couple of minutes. She's I, I've heard of her breath hold. I've seen her swim a few times, but I've heard her breath hold is really like really long. I know she has a pro background. We used to have a uh, a young lady there who was from Cirque as a swimmer. And I heard that her breath hold was like insane. Like the diver still, she hasn't been there for years, but the divers still to this day talk about her breath hold. And they would joke because we swim for 15 minute increments. Our swims are 15 minutes long. We stay down for 15 minutes and we go between regulators and breathe when we need to. And they used to joke around like, oh, did you, did you see her today? She had to take three breaths the whole time. And that's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's man. more than that. But th that was the joke because she could hold her breath for so long. But she was, I mean, pro. Wow. Pro pro. wow. Yeah. What is something oh. that we, the audience, we, the audience who comes to see the Mermaid Show, if we knew was happening, but we don't see it, you're the one who's behind the scenes. What, what is something that if we knew about it, we would just go nuts? Um, we have some some fish things. <laughs> yeah, we have some funny fish stuff that goes on. Or sometimes um, the regulators. You know, okay. you, you cannot plan for perfect, for, for everything to go perfect every time. And sometimes like pe pebbles could get into the regulator or sometimes the regulator might might be getting having water in it, getting a little bit of water might have a leak and it might need some fine tuning, but we don't actually know until it's happening, right? Until we were like oxygen and we go to grab it uh -huh. and then we're trying to take a breath and we might have a, maybe a little bit of water or something not quite right. And we're doing our best to just go, hey, look, I'm fine. Everything's fine, you know? <laughs> so, and we, we do have some, uh, some, some, uh, Gosh, there are a couple of epic sagas with some some fish over there. Some of the fish are like really cool and fun and love to interact with you and they're interested in what's going on and they're they're smarter than other fish. <laughs> and some fish are um, not nice and and or total show stealing hacks. So <laughs> we have we have the, she's the cutest fish ever. She's this big black angel fish looking thing, but she is also like the bane of my existence sometimes. <laughs> And she loves bubbles. She's like that fish from Nemo. And she's just like, Ugh! and um, every time we're breathing, she has days where she has no interest in you and she's pretty solitary. And then other days where are just like, she's in your faith and she wants bubbles. And it's really funny, <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. like, oh my God, like, can you please, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I've been slapped in the head by stingrays just big silly stingrays just coming over and I'm waving to somebody and next thing you know, it's like across the face over this way. Um, and so you just have to not freak out. If you feel something <laughs> caught, like literally if something comes here or coming across the top of your head, you just gotta go, ah, everything's, I'm moving slow, everything's fine, don't freak out, you know? So, has anyone been like, has anyone ever been like bit or stung by a stingray or, or uh, you know, fish injury <laughs> type of situations? I, okay, the, the stingrays, no. Um, yeah. Our stingrays are often raised in captivity or have been exposed to people the majority of their lives. Um, we have one stingray there from Australia, our eagle ray, that is not, um, that has not been around people until like the last, I want to say year or so. Um, but she's used to the aquarium and the divers and they have their own way of, of working with every creature in that tank. Um, and, but now she can be hand fed. Um, so the stingers are pretty docile. They're super cool. Some are more social than others or more comfortable with people than others but in general we it's not really the stingrays that we have any any issues with there are some fish though that will bite that do bite and it's not that they want to attack you it's that they sometimes think they're like oh what's going on? is this food like is this food what is this so um that's happened before or if i have <laughs> <laughs> 
we're just gonna get wild on this podcast, okay? Wow, let's I, go. Uh, one of the tops I wear has pearls sewn onto it everywhere, and we have these little yellow fish. And when I I like to lay on the bottom of the tank on my back and just lay flat and blow bubbles, right? And sometimes these fish think it's food, so they're sitting here like pecking at my chest, and I'm like, and I and then I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, you guys, like, come on. So it's <laughs> some sometimes things like that, but. I haven't had any issues. We have we have some sharks. We have several sharks in, in the aquarium. These sharks are not jagged tooth sharks. Um, they're beautiful, but some of them are kind of large. And there's been once or twice where they kind of attached onto an arm right here. But it's again, it's not teeth really. They were just like confused and not sure what's going on. So it's really just like a oh excuse you sort of thing. Like, Nothing. Oh man, but you're underwater. I can't imagine having, you can't have a panic attack because what are you going to do? You're going to breathe in water. Like, <laughs> oh man, what a, what a, what a predicament to be in. Yeah. But I guess they, you just have to be comfortable with fish altogether. Like you're probably down with swimming with fish regardless, like when you go to the ocean, things like that. Yeah. You can't really be a squirmy or really uncomfortable with that kind of stuff um, for this tank because it's a really busy tank and there's lots of really cool beautiful things but there there is a lot going on in the tank so even if you're not one to ever interact with a fish ever they're going to interact with you at some point they're going to come close or they're going to come over i i love interacting with the fish like even though we're not really supposed to do it a whole whole lot but i just absolutely adore certain fish <laughs> <laughs> and they really like me. And um, I have a, I'm, what, I'm the only, from what I understand, <laughs> I'm the only mermaid that does this, but I also started this. I have a crystal ball that we like to do tricks with and we like to float it up in bubble rings and do cool stuff. And there's a snapper fish, it's a big yellow snapper. And um, he's got this big grumpy face on him, but he loves that crystal ball. And I noticed that he was very interested in it. And so when I take it out, I kind of just throw it up and down, throw it up and down. And he's like, he comes right up to it and he watches it like this. And then I've gotten him to play with it now. And it's, it's really, for me, it's like a huge deal. <laughs> Nobody else really cares, but they're like, look at this fish. <laughs> but for me, I was like, <laughs> it was, it was a really fun, big deal. So we, all the girls love the creatures in there. We just go absolutely gaga for, for most of them. And we all have our like favorite fish and favorite stingrays and stuff too. <laughs> oh man. Props to you for being able to do that. I would, I would have a freak out if I just had my feet dipped in the water and one of them touched my toes, <laughs> I'd be out of there. <laughs> yeah. That happens. Yeah, we, we get people for mermaid school and they're so excited. They want to do it so much, but once they get, to the top, the deck where we kind of enter into the water, they see, you know, a lot of things going on in the water and living things and creatures and stingrays and big fish. And they, they get really, they're just like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. So it's, it's intimidating. It's really, really intimidating. Yeah. I mean, like, is there somebody up at the top with like a, I don't know, like a headset that's just ready for emergencies? Like, is there like a, I don't know, a medical team on standby, just ready for the worst case scenario? type of situation there is actually so every time any of us are in the water as mermaids there is always a safety diver in the water every second that we're in the water there is a safety diver in the water and they're oftentimes kind of just in the background uh, that they have eyes on us every second so yeah. there is always a risk of anything happening you could have a medical event underwater. You could go through one of the tunnels and get stuck. Um, there's wow. actually, I like to move through that big coral piece and there's like little ways to get through it underneath. And every time I do it, I always kind of find the diver and I, I'm just like, hey, I'm gonna go through here. So just keep eyes in case I get stuck. They have, you know, an emergency oxygen. They can just kind of put in your mouth for you and get you out of there or if anything happens. So we always have a safety driver in the water and we always have somebody, a dry person on the deck as well. And wow. they are both watching us the entire time. Um, also too, there's a sound system in the water. So acoustics in water are actually better than on land. 
And there's usually music playing when we dive, which is really nice to kind of have music to go with. And um, when our 15 minutes is up, we don't have to worry about like, oh man, what time is it? Am I, am I done yet or not yet? Or they just tell you like, hey, two minutes left or hey, you know, time's up, great job, come on up. And so we have people to talk to us all the time. And if anything's wrong, we can always signal the divers to like, hey, I'm too cold or hey, you know, I don't feel good or anything. So we, we have a, an amazing team there and they're trained for all of, all of that stuff. Wow, wow, that's fantastic. So when you're not doing the mermaid show at the Silverton, what other types of mermaid gigs do you do? Um, I've gotten to do some really fun stuff and it's all been corporate events. So uh, Resorts World, I was there about three times the summer before last. And um, it was all kind of like at the pool day club, uh, which was really fun. I don't, I'm not sure why, but they ended up wanting to try out mermaids for a while. And it was, it was really cool. It was really hot. And there's a lot of people partying and, it, you know, it's a day club and DJs are playing. It's really loud. It's like, man, a lot of hair and makeup and hauling stuff yeah. around in a suitcase and getting ready and all this stuff. Um, so we did that a few times and then a few private corporate events where they had, they wanted mermaids in the water and then they had like showgirls and magicians and cool stuff going, going on, um, on, uh, you know, surface level kind of around the, the water area too. So it was really stuff like that. Um, which is fun once in a while, but I, my passion is, is the water, getting to be in water, swim and perform and, and interact. And so you're never like, a f like, does temperature affect you? Like if, is there such thing as the water's too cold? Like, will like, are you swimming in the Pacific over on the coast of California? Like, uh, like, is there, I guess, what are you intimidated by when it comes to swimming in the water? If anything. This this water, I'm the always cold girl. <laughs> so I'm like probably one of the more high maintenance mermaids because I'm always cold. <laughs> but the water is 78 degrees generally, which is okay. pretty comfortable. It's kind of like a swimming pool on a cool day. It's it's not that bad. And, and then it's not, it's not bad at all. And then once you're in, it's, it's great. Um, in the wintertime, it can drop down a couple of degrees, but that's actually a big deal. And also to even 70 degrees after 15 minutes, you know, we run at, at I think 98.5 or 98.6, I think, um, after long enough, 78 gets really cold. So 15 minutes is good for me. There's been, I think only two times ever that I was too cold and I was pulled a little bit early, just a couple minutes early. And it was during like the coldest part of winter. And, but it really wasn't, it, it was nothing too bad. I was just, and I think as the day goes on and you're, you're down to your last swim of the day, you're, you're, it gets colder. Your body temperature just kind of, you know what I mean? So by the mm -hmm. last swim, you're, you're definitely colder. Wow. But it, the fun outweighs everything. So it's not an easy job. It's not easy, but it's, the, but it's so fun that it's like, yeah, I mean, people in the audience like us, we take it for granted. We're just like, oh, cool, they're doing some flips, they're blowing bubbles. Like, okay, like you don't really think about what really. But I, I remember when you would you would take a breath and then you wouldn't, and I would immediately get nervous. I'd be like, uh oh, like how long do they do that for? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, but to even think about the, like you said, you're not just sitting there holding your breath. You're swimming. You're smiling. You're putting on a show while holding your breath underwater with a bunch of stingrays and sharks <laughs> latching onto you. So yeah. kudos to you for, for being able to do that. It's really amazing. Before we wrap up, I want to ask you before I forget, what is the schedule of the mermaid show? Like Monday through Sunday or, or uh, hours? And when can, when people want to go see this show, uh, what are the hours? What are the days that they should go? We're not doing Monday through Wednesday right now. So right. We're doing Thursday through Sunday. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the mermaids start at 1230 and they swim till 8 p.m. So show, the, the last the last show is at 8 p.m. Uh, Sundays, they start at, I believe, 11 or 1130. Start about an hour earlier on Sundays and the last swim is at 7 p.m. 
Wow. And is there, each one is 15 minutes? Like what is the, like, you know, yeah. kind of like the Palazzo fountains, like every 30 minutes, like what are the intervals? The intervals are, we rotate three mermaids at a time. So we start, I think Thursday, the swims Thursday through Saturday swims start at 12 noon. Um, and it's 45 minutes of mermaids. Um, sometimes there might be about 10 to 15 minutes in between. Um, that's because our divers also need to warm up or do some things that they need to do. <clears throat> but generally it's like an hour or so of mermaiding. And then you'll have like an hour to an hour and a half break and that's it. And it, it, it will do that until 8 PM. Yeah. Wow. So that's no cool. matter what time of year there during between those hours, like you're going to catch a mermaid. Yeah. That's awesome. Is there anything else that we left out that families should know or be aware of to about this yeah, show? We, or, yeah. we do uh, mermaid school. So, and we do mermaid school for both children and adults. I think the minimum age for children is six years old. Uh, we do ask that you know how to swim. And um, it, it's super fun. You come in and you get like at least an hour and a half with the mermaids. We tour the entire facility with you. So you get to see like jellyfish and the quarantine tanks and all the cool fun stuff. And then um, you get to go put on a tail and go in the aquarium with one of the mermaids and a safety diver. And you get to know what it's like to be a mermaid and try it out for you know a little bit. And it's really fun and it's really interesting. Kids get like a free Sunday and some other really cool coupons as well. Once they leave and they're finished with the day, adults will get some really cool coupons and a mimosa. So, <laughs> but it's really fun. It's, it's a blast. Yeah, I'll need a mimosa when I see my daughter swimming with the sharks. <laughs> I found all of our fish are super cool. <laughs> yeah, like when you said, oh, it's not a jagged tooth. I'm like, so wait, does that mean that they still get bit, but it's okay? Because it's he's got not sharp jagged teeth. <laughs> like, I don't, oh, yeah, I don't no, want to it, so looking rare. at me like <laughs> Yeah, it's so rare. And if it does happen, I've only ever seen it happen one time. And it was to a mermaid. And, she, and it was um, very quickly. And it, literally the shark, it's almost like a sucker fish. Oh. And it was really quick. And she was like, what's going on with my arm? And she was just like, oh, yeah, no, don't do that. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> <being quite fine. laughs> that was really, it was, it was nothing. Claire, last question. What fish are you afraid of? For me, it's got to be probably like jellyfish, squid, octopus, like a lot of tentacles. And like what, what scares the crap out of you, even for you, someone who's very comfortable in the water? Uh, jellyfish. <sighs> Okay. Like the big yeah, ones? Or like, like a, a barracuda type, like super, super duper oh, yeah. aggressive like barracudas mm -hmm. or anything like that, or like a marlin fish, but, but definitely um, jellyfish. We have jellyfish. We don't keep them in the aquarium. They have an own, their own special display in the lounge, the crystal tanks. Mm -hmm. If you haven't yeah. seen them, they're cool. But yeah, I don't, I don't mess with jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. It's just, they don't have a face. There's just like, they're just these, and they've been around for millions of years. Like they're, they're going to outlive us. It's, I don't know. I think of that movie Sphere, like those gigantic Medusa that just like covered their little submarine. I don't know. Now <laughs> I'm a I'm legit, so not legit. A like they're deadly. The the Portuguese <laughs> man of war, all the things, all of them oh, sting. No. So there's really no. They they only just get worse and worse as you learn more about them. Oh man, are you the type that just goes far out in the ocean? Doesn't scare you? No, not necessarily. I, I, when I do, when I'm out in the ocean, I, I like fins and a mask and I like to stay probably within like 20 to 25 feet max. I like just going around like small reef type stuff and rocks and just like hanging out with the local sea life and seeing what's going on and just enjoying the beauty of it. Um, I'm, I, I keep it simple. And again, in the Mediterranean where I, where I spend the majority of the time doing that kind of thing, um, we don't have a, you know, a whole lot of dangerous things. It's a, it's pretty, it's pretty chill in the South of Italy. So I don't really have to worry about much. Sounds like, it sounds like fun for being here in Vegas. Uh, a beach sounds nice, but just for me, just give me the view and like, let me dip my feet in and, and I'm good. I'll let, I'll let Claire swim with the sharks. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I got this, it. Has been, this has been really fun. Seriously. I had a really fun time with you. Thank you so much for, for being on the Vegas faces and thank you for being one of the Vegas faces. Oh, thank you so much for having me.
Thank you for subscribing to Vegas Faces on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok under the name Gavri Group. That's G-A-V-R-I Group. Thanks, everybody. See you at the next episode.